Okay, um, it's the same day, still the 22nd, this is a few hours later, uh, about seven hours, uh, yeah, about seven hours later. Just a sort of a follow-up really to uh, the last video which was dedicated to uh, RMS's plight, um, FWG. Um, but you know, you do a video and you think, oh, you forgot to say this, you forgot to say that, oh, and you forgot to say that, well... Uh, Let's put that right now. A um, couple of things that I meant to sort of... Uh, well, I didn't mean to mention them actually in that video, but I, I could have said it you know, on the bit where I was talking about what we're doing. Um, <clears throat> but um, I forgot to say uh, some good efforts we've seen lately. Uh, Gerhard at uh, Eco Kimalpi, whatever it's called. I, can't, I could never pronounce it. Uh, his, his, his last video, that was good, uh, his results were good, not, I've got no idea of, you know, how much carbon, uh, you couldn't work out a surface area or anything like that, which is all important to me in, in this day and age now, um, but a very good effort, we've also seen recently a, a very good effort from Martin at Solar Hope, and we've also seen a very good effort from, uh, Dusen, K-Rex, K-Rex 2, I should say. And, yeah, good efforts. So, that's that bit. <coughs> this uh, battery that I said I built today, um, it's still today, but you'll probably see this tomorrow, because uh, I'm tired, tired from my recent vacation. Um, I can't remember how many milliwatt hours it was earlier on and I did say you'll get to know how much carbon is on this battery battery cell uh, and there's half a gram on this one and <coughs> the latest uh, I'll, I will show the graph it was 63 milliwatt hours so uh, I didn't charge it fully I wish I had of uh, it's back on charge now but like I say, 63 milliwatt hours from half a gram. Surface area, 6 centimetres by 8. So that, uh, you know, that, that carbon, which is the same on the anode, same on the cathode, like I said. Uh, it's garlic carbon, so that's that bit. Um, <clears throat> working quite well. So that's that battery. Uh, it's uncharged, like I say. I'm hoping that... Uh, I'm going to bust the 70, as in milliwatt hours. I can't remember what the milliamp hours were. 46 milliamp hours. And it ran for 1 hour 32. So there's a bit of information there for you. Um, if you want to calculate whatever you want to calculate, <coughs> you know, the energy, energy density, or whatever you want to do. Uh, per centimetre. I haven't bothered to, to do anything with it just yet because I want to bust that 70, don't I? Um, I was determined to do something like that when I got back. Especially when Tony had such good results. Can't have that, can I? <laughs> but anyway, um, just a bit of an update. Some things I wanted to say. Uh, I've set them now. So, um, I'm going to be doing more videos, obviously. Uh, quite where we're going to go with it all, I don't know, because what was happening before um, I went away, Tony was working with one carbon, I was working with another carbon, and between us we're kind of, we're doubling the time we can spend on uh, experimentation, um, an R&D if you like, and it's working well because he gets to try one carbon, I get to try another, and uh, he gets to try one electrolyte, I get to try another electrolyte. So it's 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 great. You, you're doubling up on your your time there uh, and the effort. Uh, he was using, as I say, I said, uh, Pete's electrolyte, and he tweaked it. And um, we need to finalise it and balance it, so I don't really want to say too much about that electrolyte at the moment uh, until it's finalised and balanced correctly 
uh, and it's working even better, obviously. Uh, my electrolyte was um, uh, a zinc iodine based electrolyte, like I said, uh, which is what I've been using for quite a while now. But it was a, it was a new take on it, uh, propylene glycol based, 20% uh, water, um, zinc sulfate and some iodine uh, and a little bit of uh, choline chloride. So that was what I was working on. <clears throat> uh, and I'd kind of almost got there with it. There was absolutely no outgassing, even at 3.2 volts with that one. So uh, when I got back, Tony mentioned how, how well this other electrolyte of Pete's worked, uh, or was working. Now he, he, he tweaked it. It was working well anyway, but uh, he's tweaked it and it's working even better. So that's great. Uh, haven't even told Pete yet. <laughs> um, but I'll email him tonight. Uh, so yeah, I've, I've got to uh, mix some of that electrolyte and that's what was on this battery. So uh, like I say, it's on charge. I didn't fully charge it, that's a shame. Um, I'm certain that it would have reached uh, 70 milliwatt hours, absolutely certain about that. So uh, let's see how it does. Whether I get a chance to put the results of this in this video, I don't know yet, but uh, it's uh, it's not late, late, but quarter to seven, but I am dog tired, so uh, I've done a few miles around Spain, walking uh, around some of the older parts of Spain, which is what I enjoy. Um, don't do all that Ibiza stuff, you know, but uh, yeah, that's about it, bit of an update. Uh, some information there for you. Um, let's see where we go. You'd be good. And in typical fashion, there was a couple of other things that I meant to uh, say there and forgot, so I'll say them now. Um, traditionally, I've uh, tended to go for uh, different carbons on the anode and the cathode. Um, things have changed a bit now. Uh, I've been working on this sort of thing behind the scenes anyway, uh, same carbons, anode and cathode. But uh, I, I saw one of, uh, I, I looked back on one of RMS's videos where he made some manganese dioxide, um, and I made some lovely manganese dioxide, that uh, chocolate brown, as he described it, and there it is, chocolate brown. That's black, that's another version of it, so... I'm hoping you can see the difference there. That really is a chocolate brown, and that is black. Uh, I've got a piece of paper. You might be able to see it a bit better against the paper. I'm hoping you can see that, the difference. So, yeah, I made some lovely manganese dioxide and uh, the RMS method. One was uh, with graphene oxide and the other one was, was without, so that was the difference there. Um, <clears throat> so, lovely stuff like I say, uh, and I was using that on my cathode, uh, or my positive. Uh, there's a bit of a disagreement between me and uh, Tony there, because uh, he calls his anode and cathode uh, the other way around. <laughs> and, and we sort of we don't say anode and cathode to each other, we say positive and negative. Uh, but anyway, that's that. Um, it, that stuff was working exceptionally well. Uh, and I'm guessing because in the electrolyte, uh, I was also, I'd also got some manganese sulphate. Um, and once, once the battery was formed, uh, the electrolyte worked exceptionally well. Uh, I, I really, you know, I can't say enough about that manganese dioxide. Uh, don't buy it, make it, because the yield as well, the yield is phenomenal. Uh, you seem, it's one of those where you seem to get more out than what you put in. Um, but that could just be wishful thinking, but that's, that's the way I see it at the moment anyway. Um, but the other thing was, I forgot to mention, um, I'm sort of moving towards... Uh, changing the weight of the battery 
uh, are moving towards uh, metal collector plates and I've managed it with this particular battery uh, on my negative or my anode uh, I've got an aluminium plate and it's working phenomenally well and I, I was working with that before I went away and that's the way it is now and it's the same one um, <clears throat> I've got it to a stage where the the aluminium plate uh, plays no part whatsoever in the chemistry at all um, managed to to bond um, some carbon fiber weave to that and uh, obviously the intention is to move away from an aluminium plate and use aluminium foil uh, which I've tried on a smaller version and it works just as well so uh, there's no problem there the next step will be to move across to, I don't know, maybe copper or something like that for the other one. Uh, that seems traditional, doesn't it? Uh, with some copper foil, you know. Uh, so you've got aluminium foil, copper foil, and the whole weight situation uh, then comes way down. That's what's behind it. And I think at the end of the day, <clears throat> the way things are going, uh, my batteries are going to be so light, it's unbelievable. In fact, the casing will, will weigh more than the actual gubbins or the, in, the innards of the battery itself. And that's the way it's going. Uh, now, I've proved it on the, the one side, the negative. Uh, tomorrow I'm going to make some inroads, uh, or it could be today, I don't know. Uh, by the time you get to see this, of course. Uh, make some inroads towards doing the uh, the other end, the positive. Um, so it's it's quite significant. It's quite important. Uh, it's a it's a major breakthrough and a major step to be able to get to that stage uh, where you've I've traditionally used uh, a graphite plate, which is quite heavy, and so is carbon fibre weave, the traditional weave as we know it. Um, I'll talk more about that later on, <clears throat> about how we've resolved the weight issue. Uh, so yeah, that's it, that's an update. Um, hoping that I get these results, like I said, uh, of this charge. Hasn't got long to go, uh, but the problem is the discharge. I'm discharging at 30 milliamps. Me and Tony have got this uh, set routine now, where we both do the same things, <clears throat> i.e. we're charging, discharging, um, I love the old 50 milliamps, don't I? You know, 60 milliamps, 80, 100, 150, um, my short circuit. But we've got to standardise a, a little bit now, uh, where we discharge at 30 milliamps. The first charge is kind of 15 minutes, uh, and then the next charge, the second charge, could be 30, and then 40 minutes or an hour or whatever. So that's kind of the way we're doing it. Except I, uh, on a, a personal uh, level, <clears throat> I like to build the battery, charge it for a minute, two minutes at the most, uh, put it under load, just to balance it all out and get all the ions moving to where they want to go, where they want to be, you know. So that's what I do, and then I do my 15 minute charge after that. So, yeah, it, it can't, it's, it's working well, you know. We've got to sort of standardise uh, what we're doing. So that's just what we are doing. Uh, so there you go, a little bit more, um, won't bore you any more now, uh, let's get some results if we can. The problem is, is the discharge is going to take quite a while on this one. I can feel it in my bones. Um, and I didn't really want to be up that late to be honest, but we'll see, we'll see. Okay, this is that um, battery that I've been talking about. Uh, 30 milliamps, as you can see, discharge current. We're currently on uh, 1.239 volts. It's been going for 51 minutes, and we are at 43 milliwatt hours. So, whether this is going to be better or worse than the last run, I don't know. Like I said, I got 63 uh, milliwatt hours before. Um, 
let's see what we get this time. Um, it's all looking good uh, for the amount of carbon that's on there, so we've got a nice curve. It's all stable. Um, it's all new construction methods. It will change, as I've said, uh, on the positive piece of. Uh, well, I don't know. I'm going to try uh, aluminium first, same as I've got on the negatives. So we shall see. It's all new. Over and out. Okay, I'm back with this battery. Uh, it's clear to me at this stage that. Uh, well, after 1 hour and 28, we've got 0.425 left, and uh, cutoff is 0.4, and we've only got 59 million, uh, milliamp hours, milliwatt hours, sorry. So it's clear that uh, I'm not going to get even get the 63, let alone the 70 I wanted. Um, don't know what I've done wrong or what's gone wrong, but uh, well, nothing's gone wrong as such. Uh, we've got a decent curve. Um, who knows? Uh, not enough charge, too much charge. Not certain at this stage, but uh, not going to analyse it tonight now. It's getting late. Um, we'll just watch the end of it there. And that is still spinning at the moment. And we're just about to come to an all stop. Like that. Next obvious thing to look at is a recovery, which we've got, or we're getting, I should say. So yeah, uh, leave this one overnight now and uh, I'll come back in the morning. Mr. Dedication. Okay, here's a section that I'm happy with. This is uh, a new battery, my all new battery. Um, 30 milliamp discharge, as you can see, it's been going for one hour and 48 minutes. We're on 0.541 volts, significantly uh, 70 milliwatt hours, and 54 milliamp hours. Now, the significance of that is um, there's ha uh, sorry one gram of material on this battery. Um, so, oh, and this is the first charge, so not doing too bad, I don't think. Um, a larger surface area, but I'll explain more about that um, in the video itself. Okay, so uh, what's the significance of this part of the video then? Well, it's the following day for one. Um, all the stuff you've seen prior to this was yesterday, and I said I was going to put this video up today, but I haven't had time, to be honest, uh, because I've been doing stuff, you know. Um, I'm pleased to see that, well, to say that uh, that phone there is no longer on that massive stand that I used to have, that timber stand. Because I bought some new equipment, I bought these on eBay. Um, that is a clamp, and you can clamp that to a fairly thick shelf, um, like so. And you just turn that and clamp it up, and that is um, a holder for your phone. Brilliant! I've got two of these. I've got one for that section there, and I've got one for here. Um, video in the uh, the laptop and the uh, the data login software and all the rest of it but anyway that's enough of that <clears throat> um, one thing that's happened today which is pretty good uh, one or two people that haven't been able to comment on my channel for quite some time I did have a problem a while back I got hacked or whatever whatever happened uh, Martin from Solar Hope uh, is now commenting on my channel for one uh, and one or two others can comment now, I think. So uh, that's that. Um, anyway, from yesterday, uh, I'd got a battery running yesterday, 
and I, I mentioned I've mentioned that it, it had an aluminium plate uh, on my anode negative as I call it Tony doesn't <laughs> um, and it was working fine um, it reached 63 milliwatt hours and there was 0.4 of a gram and 0.4 of a gram on the anode and on the cathode respectively uh, I've built a new one today because I had some larger graphite plates uh, delivered today from China they're not going to it's not going to stay there uh, it, it will be gone but the significance of this one is uh, I've got one gram of active material on it uh, so that's half a gram on the anode and half a gram on the cathode but the other significant thing is I've done away with that aluminium plate and I'm now using aluminium foil um, this stuff so that is my collector now on my anode or my negative um, and it's quite light in comparison to a chunk of graphite or traditionally what I've used is uh, carbon fibre weave so um, you know both of those are quite heavy this isn't so I'm using that I've built the battery it's a larger surface area uh, it's actually 10 centimeters by 13 centimeters but with one gram of material half and half so this is the first charge um, I will show the battery um, but I'm just going to look at the data logger now it's been running for one hour and 56 minutes don't forget this is one gram of material uh, one hour and 56 minutes and we're on 72 milliwatt hours at the moment um, Unfortunately, I I dropped. I, I made a boo boo. Uh, <clears throat> normally, I cut off at point four. Now it was point five. It's now point four uh, because there's no detrimental effect to the batteries or the battery cell. Um, so <laughs> I've I've left it on point three because I was testing something else earlier on. So it's it's going to run on for a while. It's at 0.5 at the moment, but it's been at 0.5 something for ages now, so it's going to run on for a little bit. But I'm quite happy about this this situation. Uh, and what I'm going to do, um, the next thing I'm going to do with this battery is, uh, I'm going to change. I'm going to swap out that graphite plate because they are so heavy. It's a joke. Um, and once I've done that for a piece of foil. Um, and I'm thinking of using copper or maybe even aluminium. I don't know if the aluminium, uh, it should work because the alu th this aluminium there, this one, is playing no part in the chemistry at all. So um, can I do the same with the cathode or the positive? Uh, let's see. That's the next step. What I'm going to do, <coughs> because this is the first charge, Obviously, the battery needs to form a little bit. Um, it's the same carbon, garlic carbon, as the, the, the previous battery. Um, it's it's still running, you know. It's one hour fifty-eight now. Um, 0.497 volts, seventy-two milliwatt hours, fifty-nine milliamp hours. So. It's, I'm pleased with that. I am very pleased with that. <clears throat> I'm pleased with the way it's been constructed. Uh, I'm pleased with the performance. Basically, <clears throat> what I'm what I'm doing now, what I'm into now, is not trying to bunch all these carbons together into a small area. Um, I know I can build a battery uh, with one gram of carbon, same as this. And I can bunch it all up into a small area, half a gram there and half a gram there. But they just do not seem to perform as well as this setup where you've got a larger surface area and that, those same carbons are spread out across that surface area. 
that's all there is to it, you know. <coughs> it just works better, and that's it. So, um, that's all I can say at the moment, really. Until this finishes, there's a, I've, I've done a little bit of video of the battery uh, counting down. It, it's quite difficult, actually, to, um, to to do a video that, that pleases everyone. You know, do I just take a photograph? Do I do a bit of video? Do I talk like this? What do you do? You can't please everyone. So, um, this particular video is is bits and pieces of everything, and that's it. That's all there is to it. Um, just getting back to RMS and FWG for a moment. Um, a lot of people have responded to my last video, which was all about that uh, particular issue that uh, Robert's got. Um, yeah, a lot of people have commented. Um, you know, quite a few suggestions. Um, suggest it to Rob. You know, let's let's all think of something that we could do and suggest it to Rob. One of my suggestions was um, <coughs> I would gladly uh, sponsor, um, you know, this particular, well, I showed this yesterday, didn't I? The world distance record run, okay, the world distance record run uh, buys so much money per mile. But the problem is <coughs> they've still got to organise this and put it together. It's going to cost money. Uh, so, one of my suggestions, and, and I will suggest this to Rob, um, would be that I would gladly say, well, if you think you're going to do 500 miles, and I would I would sponsor you by X amount per mile, let's just say if I said, well, I'll sponsor you by a pound a mile, um, I'll pay that money up front. Simple. And... Uh, if they only do 450, then he owes me 50 quid, doesn't he? He owes me 50 bucks, you know? That's, it's simple. I, I, I'm going to suggest that, and I, I would personally do that. Whether anyone else, you know, would do it, I don't know, but uh, I would certainly do that. So, um, and, so I'm just <laughs> making sure it's still running. Um, and it is. But um, the other thing is, I mean... <sighs> This Indiegogo camp, they, they, these Indiegogo, what the hell is that? I, I don't know what it is, but, you know, would I ever trust them with my money? Or a, a campaign that I've got running? No, never, not a chance. Um, why not just organise it through someone local that you can trust, like, I don't know, your bank manager or a solicitor or something like that that's local that can handle the funds to show that everything's all above board and all the rest of it. I, what's wrong with that? You know. Um, I once uh, had an idea for a patent and I couldn't afford the patent, but I lodged all of, well, whatever it was, the idea, uh, and everything else, you know, all of the details uh, in the form of a patent, but I lodged it with my bank manager, my solicitor, and I even went to my local police station and I said are you willing to do this this is what is in that envelope are you willing to put that in a safe regarding this and they said yeah they did it um, it didn't come to much at the end of the day but you get the general idea and principle of you know what I'm saying so uh, still running just gonna check yeah 74 milliwatt hours um, two hours and three minutes. 62 milliamp hours. Uh, and that's from one gram of material. Fifth, uh, point 0.5, point 0.5. Uh, I haven't worked it. Well, I'm not gonna, even going to try and work it out at the moment. Um, it's quite late. I've had a long day. Uh, 10 after 10. Um, PM. So, yeah. Uh, that's this segment of the video then. Um, ideas to Rob. Don't put them to me. Put them to Rob. Uh, the guy's worth it, you know. Uh, they're all worth it. You know, all of FWG. Good team now. Um, worth us sort of putting some effort into it. If we can. You know, if you, if we, if you can't, you can't. 
if you can, you can. If you're willing, you are. If you're not, you're not. That's it. Simple. In a nutshell. So anyway, I won't bore you anymore. That's that. Okay, so, <clears throat> as I said in that last segment, um, it's still running. <laughs> and it's still running now. Uh, it's now 2017. We've got 76 milliwatt hours, 69 million hours. Uh, we've only got 0 0.350 left, but uh, unfortunately I set it to 0 0.3 as opposed to 0 0.4. So it's going on for a little bit longer, isn't it? You know, but that's okay. It's the first charge. Right, so we are literally just coming to the end of that one. Um, two hours 21. <coughs> the only thing we can hope for now is that we get some recovery stroke bounce back um, 77 milliwatt hours 71 milliamp hours I'm uh, over the moon with that average voltage 1.09 okay I'll live with that so I'm gonna give that a minute just so it gets up to a volt uh, on the recovery and then uh, I'm gonna put it on charge again but what I'm gonna do this time uh, it needs a, a longer charge this I'm going to give it an hour and 15 because I'm charging at uh, 2.4 volts and uh, it needs a longer charge but I'm going to have to run it overnight um, <coughs> now there's the battery um, this is the uh, aluminium foil I'll try and do this one handed and hope I don't switch the phone off there's the foil there, the aluminium foil, there's the uh, graphite plate, as I said, um, there's, there's no binder at the moment, so I've, I've had uh, a bit of seepage, you know, with uh, carbons out the side there, but uh, that's a piece of titanium, that's a piece of titanium, and uh, yeah, that's the battery, basically. Um, I'll cut these off tomorrow and uh, see where we go but uh, for the moment I'm going to put it back on charge catch you later um, ok this is the, uh, the second charge of this battery I've put it on as you can see seven and a half minutes ago um, nice to see that we've got over two volts for seven and a half minutes. Um, how many more minutes it will go for that? I don't know, but uh, looking good on the second charge. Um, obviously, initially, like this, you get. Uh, well, we've got those pesky lines, but uh, we've got 8 minutes and 8 milliwatt hours, that's what you tend to get earlier on. So, 30 milliamps constant current load again. Still over 2 volts uh, and over 8 minutes. Not bad. Surface area. It's all about surface area. Right, so uh, oh, this one I had to leave and uh, it was running overnight, obviously. Um, I couldn't stay around for that amount of time. Um, 2 hours and 47. Uh, I think it was midnight when I put this one on, uh, or it finished its charge, I should say, uh, which was a, a one hour charge. And this is the, uh, the larger surface area battery uh, with one gram of active material. Um, so that's uh, 0.5 anode and 0.5 cathode of active material. Um, the active materials are both the same. Um, there is no difference anode to cathode on this particular battery. And as you can see, uh, we reached 93 milliwatt hours. Uh, 84 milliamp hour capacity, I'm glad to say, and an average voltage of 1.12. Uh, it's looking superb. That was the second charge, uh, it is on charge now and I'm going to give it uh, another hour uh, and go again. 
and we'll see what's what. The only thing that can go wrong now is that uh, it might be a bit dry, i.e. Um, electrolyte, but uh, because this is a, uh, a an aqueous electrolyte, so uh, yeah, all good. Uh, very pleased to see that, 93 milliwatt hours. Um, kind of knocking on the door of uh, lithium at the moment, but uh, let's see what this next charge brings. Over and out. <coughs> okay, so what I thought I would do um, with this particular video, um, I'm going to keep it as short as I can. Uh, this is day three, this is now Sunday, um, so we're on the 24th, aren't we? Um, I started on the 22nd, if you uh, remember. Um, I thought it sort of prudent to, to do a run, it's a new battery, and sort of report on it. Um, it's now, uh, it, it's been charged three times now. Uh, the last run was overnight, it was two hours, 47 minutes, so I went... I left and went to bed. Uh, came back this morning and it was 93 milliwatt hours. Um, the significance of what I'm doing at the moment is there's one gram of material on that battery uh, over quite a, a, a nice surface area, uh, 130 square centimeters. Um, so the significance of that is one gram is nice and easy to equate, you know. To a kilogram uh, and we can talk about watt hours uh, and all that sort of stuff for that particular carbon um, so 93 milliwatt hours um, per gram which is pretty good it's on its third charge at the moment um, it reported 86 milliamp hours so what I've done on this third charge now is I've upped the load uh, 86 milliamp hours which which effectively means it, it can run for 86 milliamps for an hour um, so what I've done I've, I've, I've chose 70 milliamps as the load and that's what it's doing now um, so the, I'll include this on the end of this segment as well the uh, the results uh, I've got a lot to do yet today because I want to swap out that carbon plate on my my collector plate uh, as you know I've said earlier on I'm using uh, aluminium foil on the one side um, I've got a carbon plate which is graphite on the other side and I want to swap that out for for a metal plate you know as in foil metal foil probably be copper whether I've got that the right way around I don't really know but at the end of the day um, the metals are, are playing no part in the chemistry, so I'm not concerned about that. Um, so, how's it doing at the moment? I'll have a quick look. It's been going for 40, uh, four, I nearly said 40 then, 14 minutes it's been going at the moment. We've got almost 1.9 volts left, and it's 34 milliwatt hours, so that's at 70 milliamps. Now you'd expect it to be quite high initially like that, um, because it's a higher load, uh, just over double the load that was before at 30 milliamps. So. Everything is as it should be. We've got a lovely, a nice line at the moment, which will turn into a, a curve. And we're tending with this electrolyte to get um, sort of a that first big hump. It come, it dips a bit, and then it starts again with a, another hump at the end. Uh, need to sort of look at that with the electrolyte and see what's going on. Um, but I'm not going to do that just yet. Uh, this is all about, uh, as it always has been with me. Uh, finding that carbon, you know, that one, um, and this one I'm sticking with, it's the same carbon on the anode as the cathode, uh, and as I explained earlier on, it's garlic carbon, I'd never tried it, 
that particular carbon. I've always had that on the positive or the cathode, as I call it. Um, so I've never tried it on the anode and the cathode. I have now. Uh, and I've been working with it like this for some time and uh, it's proving to be something else. Now what I'm going to do, one of the other steps I'm going to take is I'm going to build a larger version of this as in a larger surface area and use that same one gram of carbon because I did, I did come to realise that uh, I, could, well, I couldn't get the whole gram of carbon on it actually. I left some in the beaker, I, I mixed it with the electrolyte uh, there's no binder, by the way. Um, I know this stuff works just as well with virtually, well, most of the binders that I've tried with it. Uh, this was a trial run, don't forget. It was, um, it was with the foil. That was new, as opposed to an aluminium plate. It's now aluminium foil. And I've shown this earlier on. Um, it is this stuff. And it's not very heavy. So... Half of my battery now is ultra light for the surface area and the size. Uh, that's 100 mil, and that is 100 mil by 130 mil, as in millimeters. So that's where we are. Um, 93. I wonder what this one's going to say. Unless anything goes wrong, that line at the moment is superb. And I'll just report now as to where we are. 1.853 volts. Almost 18 minutes. <coughs> 41 milliwatt hours. Keep your fingers crossed for me, guys. Although you'll be late. Because this is now and you're watching this then. <laughs> Anyways, um, like I said before, any suggestions that we can find to help Rob and the team out uh, for this world record run, um, send your ideas to Rob. Right then, um, I'm going to conclude this video um, here in the interest of uh, not boring everyone to death. Uh, as you all know, I've been away on a short vacation. Uh, before that, um, I was sort of absent from this scene. Uh, that was because I was dedicated to the bench uh, and to what I was doing. Uh, and it requires that level of dedication. Um, which is a lot of your time and your effort. And if you don't put that in, you don't get this. And I'm about to tell you what this is in a second or two. Um, so the carbonator's back. Um, a lot of people making strides out there, as we know. Uh, we don't know really where RMS is at the moment because he hasn't sort of told us that much, to be honest. Um, this is my latest battery on test. Uh, I mentioned it earlier on in the video. I've told you what the um, the surface area is. I've told you what the uh, weight of the carbon is that's on there, which is one gram, and I'm sticking to that now as a as a benchmark because it's easy to equate to the one kilogram, as in kilowatt hours per kilogram. Uh, so. This battery hasn't finished, this is its third charge, charge number three, okay? It hasn't finished yet, but I'll give you some details. This is the end of the video, apart from some video of this, and or pictures, whichever, of the data logger. Uh, but I'll just give you the details now. Okay, it's been running for an hour and 16 minutes. I've got 0.8 of a volt left. 
I'm discharging at 70 milliamps. The capacity at the moment is 86 milliamp hours. And the energy is 130 milliwatt hours. This for me is a momentous day. I've dreamt of this day for a long, long time. Now, uh, I'm trying to think of the figures for lithium batteries at the moment. Uh, some of the lesser lithium batteries, I'm not talking about the lithium cobalt now, but some of the others, the phosphates and all the rest of it, uh, I'm not far away there. Um, they reckon that the lithium ions, uh, which is the cobalt, are between 150 and 200 uh, kilowatt hours per kilogram. A lot of people doubt those figures. I don't know, to be honest. I really don't know. Um, one of the guys I would trust is RMS, and he said, in reality, it's nowhere near that. So, I tend to trust that comment. Um, the reality of all of these batteries that you see from these manufacturers uh, isn't the real reality in the real world. But in this real world today, now, you know, it hasn't changed yet, but 130 milliwatt hours. That's what I've got on my data logger, on my third charge, discharging at 70 milliamps constant current. So, who knows where the next charge will go? This one hasn't finished yet. 0.748 volts left. Unfortunately, I left it at 0.3 as the cutoff voltage. I keep forgetting to change that back to 0.4, but it's not, uh, I don't think it's detrimental to the battery. So, um, I'll go again, but I will change it next time to 0.4. But, uh, Ninety-two milliamp hours. <laughs> if that gets to a hundred, I'm going to be ecstatic, uh, and that's just the capacity, you know. So uh, the last, the last run was eighty-six milliamp hours on the second charge. This being the third charge, like I say, yeah, ninety-three. So what I'm going to have to do is close this for now, this outro, shall we call it, um, and do a little bit more video of this where it is now because I've sort of got video of it, you know, part ways through this. Uh, like I say, I'm just absolutely over the moon. I'm just ecstatic. Uh, whatever else this gives me now, I mean, it's kind of by the by, really. Uh, I've got to 130. Uh, milliwatt hours and we all know what that is uh, per kilogram don't we um, in watt hours per kilogram don't know what more to say <laughs> you'd be good okay so like I said I uh, accidentally left this one at point three uh, as a cutoff point which we're almost at now uh, 1 hour and 29 at the moment it's all about to come to a stop as we know um, 104 milliamp hours 137 milliwatt hours wow average voltage 1.31 ho ho uh, and to boot we've got some recovery um, so well it's a nice curve too now we've got that glitch um, at 0.5, which is um, uh, kind of a, an, an anomaly uh, in the electrolyte. Uh, with the with the uh, the pH levels, um, oh, I've got a paper which I keep meaning to s sort of talk about, uh, where it explains what goes on there. It's not actually detrimental to the battery as such, uh, but uh, that's it, guys. I'm going to put this back on charge 
um, 137 milliwatt hours. Now, the next charge, I don't know what to expect. Um, haven't got a clue, but uh, thanks for watching. Um, if you got this far, obviously, uh, this is, as I said, a momentous day for me. Um, I've never been here before at this sort of uh, energy level. So, happy days. Uh, you all have fun in your experimentation, and I'll see you in a while. I do apologise, but there are a couple of things that I neglected to say or mention in this video. And it's all important, especially when you're doing what we're doing. Um, those figures that you've just heard and seen are the figures. We can see that. It's, it's on the data logger. I've shown you the battery. Um, I've talked a little bit about the construction. I've spoken about the electrolyte. Uh, not in depth, but it's the electrolyte that, uh, as I mentioned uh, prior, that Peter Middleton designed developed. Uh, it's an electrolyte that Tony, uh, Tony Morris then tweaked uh, and it worked even better and it's now been retweaked by me and it's probably slightly better again. So that's you know the electrolyte. I'll put a bit of a description about the electrolyte uh, on the bottom of the video. I won't talk about it now. Uh, but quite importantly, those figures were achieved with an aqueous electrolyte in the hopes that we can redevelop that electrolyte into being uh, non-aqueous. That's the challenge now. The other challenge is, uh, I've said that this anode, or negative, side of the battery is running on uh, this silver foil, um, aluminium foil, sorry, uh, and I would like to now attack the other side of the battery, which is by cathode, positive, shall we say, um, with some copper foil. Now, Traditionally, the, the cathode on a battery is the most destructive side uh, in terms of when you look at the redox reactions and what happens chemically on the cathode. It's more of a challenge. This is why I left it till last, to be honest, and attacked uh, the negative first. Uh, I do know that uh, I've got a challenge there as well now, but I'm going to uptake that challenge. Uh, as a second thing and the electrolyte like I said as a first thing but I, I, I guess the most significant part about what I'm about to say is this that battery there or that battery cell call it whatever you want to call it I call it a battery um, is running on a biomass carbon it's a carbon that I've developed and I've told you what it is, uh, and it's on both sides of the battery. Uh, there's half a gram on the anode and half a gram on the cathode, and it's our own sort of development. You know, it's not your activated carbon that you would take and buy off the shelf, derived from coconut shells or anything like that. It's purely a carbon that I've developed. And I'm quite proud of myself, actually, with this one. So, just another couple of things to note. It's an achievement to develop your own carbon like that. And to be able to use it on both sides of the battery uh, is fantastic. You know, When you look at production methods and however you produce this thing at the end of the day, to have the same carbon on both sides of your separator it is fantastic you, you couldn't wish for better than that although a lot of my good developments were with different carbons in the past um, you know I've mentioned that uh, I was using that nice chocolate brown 
manganese dioxide. Fantastic stuff. There's none of that on this. I've mentioned that uh, I've been using iodine as well in this zinc formulation. Um, electrolyte. There's no iodine in this yet. There will be, but I haven't finished with this stage where I'm at now. I want to give this the fourth charge, maybe the fifth, maybe the sixth, uh, in the hopes that on that fourth charge, I'm going to smash that 137 milliwatt hours. Was it 137? Yeah. <laughs> and 104 milliamp hours capacity. So, that's it. Um, important things to note and important things to say. When you look at chemistry in other batteries out there that are established, uh, and the carbons and how they're made, what they're made with, this to me is part way to making what I've originally said all along which is a battery that we know you could recycle it, um, shall we say 99%, it's eco-friendly, it will be hopefully uh, very, very environmentally friendly, eco-friendly at the end of the day. Um, it's made from biomass materials, apart from obviously, uh, you know, the collectors. And... Uh, yeah, what's the other one? Recyclable, eco-friendly. Um, biodegradable. Uh, in reality, um, it should, or well, most of it, be biodegradable. We know that the metals would degrade. Um, I know that uh, the separators, whichever separator I use, whichever binder I use, will degrade. Um, and the carbons, well, what would happen to the carbons over years? Well, you give them back to the earth, eh? Or recycle them. 